Hello, Alien here. In this video, we're going to take a look how to minimize the amount of data and traffic costs involved with running your Mesh Central instance. So if you're going to run a Mesh Central instance on a commercial hosting service, you're going to pay for the compute that you're uh, renting, but also you're going to pay for traffic that is either you know being received or sent to your instance. So you have to be aware of the cost of that traffic and how to minimize it. So let's take a look at a few things we can do to minimize it in this video. And the first thing I want to do is take a look at the actual cost. Here I have the AWS EC2 pricing. And you'll notice that in my region, which is US West Oregon, the uh, the price is uh, is free for all data coming into your instance. The first gigabyte of data going out is free, but after that, it is uh, nine cents per gigabyte. So, you know, if you're sending a terabyte of data, um, you have to take a look at that price and multiply it and take a look at how much it's going to cost you. So obviously what we want to do is minimize the amount of data we send and receive, well, especially send in this case, but we also want to maximize the amount of work we get out of that data. So let's take a look at how Mesh Central does that. So if you take a look at Mesh Central in this slide, there's various places where Mesh Central sends and receives data, and we've done some work to compress that data so that it minimizes the amount of traffic sending and receiving. So one of the things we've done um, when it comes to the Mesh Central sending and receiving to the browser side is we can minify and compress web pages being sent there or you know graphic elements and so on. And also the, the WebSocket between the browser and the server, we can compress the data on that WebSocket to um, maximize the amount of work here. On the agent side, well, there's a few things. Sometimes there's agent updates, and the agents are quite large, about uh, three to four megabytes. So if you have 10,000 devices that you have to update, well, that can be quite a bit of data. So you want to try to minimize the amount of data by compressing that. Also, we send JavaScript to the agent. And so that's updated much more frequently. We want to compress that. And also there's WebSocket traffic between the agent and Mesh Central. And so we want to compress that. Now, the nice thing is on the agent side, we added deflate support so that you can, uh, so the agent is fully capable of compressing and decompressing data. And so once we've added that compression and decompression module inside the agent, we can now uh, use it for lots of things. For example, we can create zip files. Uh, so you can pick multiple files in the uh, file view, click zip and compress them, and that module will do the compression. But it also is involved in compressing all these other things. So let's take a look at just the updates, just sending mesh agent updates. Well, if you're not going to compress anything, then if you're like, for example, updating uh, 10,000 devices that are attached to your server, well, you can take a look at the traffic for, um, for Windows agents, for Linux agents, and the mesh core, which is the JavaScript, and then what's the, the bytes size, so this is an approximate uh, byte size for a certain version we had in the past, and this is the compressed byte size, and that for 10,000 device, uh, devices, the number of gigabytes and the savings you get. So if just by compressing, we can save like a dollar fifty-two in hosting cost by uh, compressing just the Windows agent if you're updating the agent to 10,000 machines. If you're uh, updating the mesh core, then it's 29 cents, and the Linux, you know, it's a little bit less than the Windows because um, different functionality and different agent. So the, uh, the amount of data being sent for updating all the agent drops significantly, and so there's quite a bit of savings. The other one is WebSocket compression. Now, WebSocket compression is very interesting because things like 
transferring files or transferring uh, the, the remote KVM terminal, all that stuff is done through WebSocket. And so, of course, you have WebSocket from the browser to Mesh Central, you have WebSocket from the Mesh Central to the agent, and those by default are off, and you need to turn them on if you want to take advantage of that. And we'll be demonstrating that in a minute. And then lastly is the web pages being sent to the browser. In this case, the compression by default is true, but the minification by default is false. It's not there, so you need to enable that. And so, you know, if you have a lot of, of data uh, for all your web pages, your pictures, and so on, then if you minify it, if you compress it, you get much less uh, data being sent to the browser. So that's really nice if you're having users come in, they have a better performance, better experience on your website, but also it saves you hosting costs. So let's take a look at a practical example. And what I'm gonna do is use my trusty server here. And I'm gonna start by disabling all the compression. So I have my uh, config file right here. And what we're gonna take a look at is currently I have compression set to false. Now this is the compression of the website when it's serving uh, images, web pages, CSS, uh, all this stuff. Now, currently it's, it's false. By default, if you don't specify this, this is true. So Express.js will compress everything. And then the two other settings, WebSocket compression, this is for the WebSocket compression towards the browser, and then agent WebSocket compression, this is compression towards the agent. So you, you need, um, if you turn the first one on, then you will have compression towards the uh, server, but it, with the second, but the agent will connect and not compress. If you turn on the second one on, then the agent will also compress. So now, just to show you how big of a difference this makes, I'm going to take a look at Firefox here. And so this is my normal server with a bunch of computers connected to it. And I am going to go in Web Developer. I am going to open the networking tab, all, and I'm going to hold shift and hit refresh, which is going to force uh, Firefox to reload everything with no cache. So we're going to do that. And the number we want to take a look at is on the bo in bottom right here. So the just loading all the pictures, the entire web application, and of course, this is not just this web page, it's the entire website. So all the tabs, like everything that you know that that you see here well that's 73 requests so far uh, 4.22 megabytes and we compress we transferred 4.27 and that's because there's a little bit of overhead on top of the uh, the raw data so that would be what you would have if you turned off all compression now what I'm going to do is I am going to um, actually before I turn on compression there's another thing you can do in Mesh Central, which is minification. And the way you turn on minification, I have a little, uh, web, little config here, is that you, you have these three settings that we talked about, and then you can go in domain and say minify true. And this will serve a web page that, um, that doesn't have any carriage return line feeds and stuff like that. So you take a look at the source code of this page, and you see this is the source code of the page, it's quite long. But I can manually override the minification by just adding minify equal one in the URI. Now, uh, you can also override it the other way. If your default configuration is to minify, then you can put minify zero and, and deminify your page. So I'm gonna hit enter here. And then again, what we're gonna do is hit shift refresh to make sure we get a fresh page. And what you're gonna see is that instead of four megabyte range of download, we're now down to 2.8 megabytes or 2.9 megabytes transferred. So we've already cut quite a bit of data. Now, minification doesn't affect pictures. It only affects things like CSS, HTML, things that we can minify. And then if you look at the page source, you'll see that the web page is now one single long line. That's because we're optimizing the web page 
to be as efficient as possible. So no comments, uh, variable names are shrunken and, and so on and so forth. So the, what, here you've basically lost no functionality, but you've already cut your, uh, the size of the uh, data transferred by quite a bit. Okay, so now on top of this, I am going to go back to the configuration and I'm gonna turn on co compression. I'm gonna save, restart my server. And so now what I'm gonna do is remove Minify and recall that we had, you know, around four megabytes. I'm gonna hit re shift refresh again, just to get a clear uh, download count here. And so what we have is back to around 4.2 megabytes of data, but we're transferring only 1.2 megabytes because you'll notice that every time we transfer something, like for example, the original web page, um, you know, was one megabyte, but we only transferred 200K. And so every item here, you'll see that, you know, it's 40K, but we actually send 9.8K and so on and so forth. So at the end, the, the compression of all the elements before they're sent to the browser makes a significant difference here. Now on top of that, we can minify phi equal one. And then once again, I'm gonna hit shift refresh just to get a clean view here. And so what you're going to see is that we're starting off of a much smaller block of data, instead of four megabytes, we're at 2.8. And then after compression, we still get about one megabyte transferred. But now we have the minimum amount of data and we have compression on top of that. So that gives you the maximum uh, efficiency for your web pages. Now, on top of that, I wanna show WebSocket compression. So recall in the slide that the browser can talk to the agent with WebSocket compression. Now, the, um, the way we're gonna take a look at this and demonstrate that this works is I'm going to close this and I'm going to go in Mesh Central Router. So I'm gonna run Mesh Central Router and I am going to go to computer and say remote desktop. So now I'm remote desktop, I'm doing a remote desktop on this computer on the top right, I have a little button called stats, and it shows me the real-time statistics of the traffic going in and out of Mesh Central Router to, the, uh, to Mesh Central. So this uh, remote desktop here is identical to the one you would have if you just went on the desktop page. So it's the same thing, but the nice thing here is I get the extra statistics um, inside Mesh Central Router, so it's great for demonstration. Now I have WebSocket compression turned off. You'll see 0% here, um, and you know the, the bytes sent and receive equal the compressed because there's no compression. So I'm gonna go back and so my, inside my config, I'm gonna turn on WebSocket compression, restart the server, go back into Firefox, I'm going to go here, turn on the Mesh Central Router, or launch it. Okay. Then I go right click, Remote Desktop, boom. Turn on the stats. And you'll notice here that immediately the compression has been quite effective. So incoming bytes, we have about 800K and uh, you know, 100K of decompressed data but only 427K uh, of compressed data. And as I move the window, you notice that the compression changes here. So like just, just doing this, I'm, I'm getting about, you know, one third data less by using WebSocket compression. So that's pretty neat anyway. Uh, and of course the, the, the thing to note here is that I'm demonstrating this on Mesh Central Router because I have the statistics, but the exact same thing happens in the website. So the um, last thing I wanna mention is that the uh, agent compression when doing updates and the uh, Mesh Core compression when we send JavaScript, that's always on by default as of 
you know, six months ago or so. So you get the benefits automatically. Uh, older versions of Mesh Central didn't do that, so you, your hosting costs kind of went down for free. But now what you should really do is if you want to benefit from these extra features, just make sure to to make sure compression is true. By default, that should be true. Turn on WebSocket compression if you want it, and then turn on minification by default if you want that feature. So in any case, this has been a video on how to minimize your hosting costs for Mesh Central. You should get a noticeably smaller uh, traffic hosting bill when you set these options correctly. So hopefully that will help. Thank you very much. Have a great day.